Okay, hello everybody. So if you are here watching this today, I'm guessing that you are ready to exist in your world without an uncontrollable itch, without random allergies, embarrassing flakes, or burning red skin. That is what I am going to be talking about today. First of all, I just want to say that I see you. I hear, I feel what you're going through. I went through it myself, eczema, TSW, skin stuff, it sucks. And I wanna help you clear your skin permanently from the root cause. I totally understand how much this can overtake every facet of your life. You know, being so uncomfortable and itchy all of the time, you can't sleep because you're anxious or just itchy or hot or cold or red or oozy or flaky or dry or anywhere in between at any given moment. I feel you, it's so embarrassing to just have flakes just shedding all over the place. People staring at you with pity and giving you unsolicited advice about which cream they use or which doctor they saw. It's starting to perhaps affect your relationships. You're finding yourself more irritable and snappy or feeling just guilty um, about being a burden with your family, your friends, your spouse, your children. And all of this is leading to your mental health starting to suffer. You're feeling like there's no answers. Maybe you've tried things. Maybe you've heard healing isn't linear. Time is the only treatment. It seems hopeless. You're overwhelmed. And there's no way that you have any intention of living your life like this. And I have no intention of living that or, or uh, of you living your life like that either. I don't want you to be dependent on any steroids or any other drugs. Neither do you. I want to help you clear your skin from the inside out. Like I said, that is why we are all here. If you are new here and we have never met, my name is Dr. Kayla Clark. I'm a naturopathic doctor. And after going through, after having eczema my entire life, I went through topical steroid withdrawal myself in 2016. Um, it took about eight months for my body to clear it and move through it. And since then, my skin has been great. I have not touched another steroid cream. Um, that being said, the process itself was really difficult. It sucked. It was very lonely. It was very confusing. Not many people knew what TSW was at the time even less than now. Even still, I consider myself lucky because I was in medical school at the time when, you know, on one hand, it was extremely stressful. But on the other, I was exposed to so many different doctors, mod modalities, naturopaths, healers, acupuncturists, um, lab work, supplements. And I learned a ton about myself, about the body, about TSW, and about how to treat it. I, at the same time, I also was able to um, teach the other practitioners about TSW and what it was. So they were able to learn about it and help spread the awareness essentially. However, even now as topical steroid withdrawal becomes more commonly known, I still see that the main are expensive food sensitivity tests and less supplements, super restrictive diets. These are not, in my opinion, the best way to go about things. They didn't work for me. Um, they don't work as well for my clients all the time, except for when it is the right timing and the right placement. And so this is where it is key. <clears throat> These things are all super helpful, but the difference is knowing how and when to use them. Everything needs an intention. TSW and eczema are both very nuanced and layered conditions coming from different facets and different places in the body. It is difficult to give one thing to one person and have a blanket protocol. Everybody is so different um, and everybody requires a completely different approach. And that is what I, I am going to talk about in this video here. Um, how I take a very foundational yet customized approach to TSW. All of my clients receive custom long-term plans and often I will see healing within eight to 12 months with consistent recalibration, um, whether that's working with me or being really consistent and diligent in understanding your own um, your own nuances in which I have provided for you in my framework, the roadmap to steroid free skin. I'm gonna go through how exactly I'm gonna do that in this video and also provide you with a link to join at the end and also a bonus of a seven day low histamine meal plan and recipe book. So stay tuned till the end of this training for that. And I hope you get some value out of this, welcome. I'm gonna to be talking about topical steroid withdrawal. What is actually going on? It's a little bit of a misnomer, I think in my opinion. I mean, it is a withdrawal of topical steroids, although it is more complex than that, which you will see as we start to go through this. Um, so what are topical steroids in the first place? They are a synthetic form of the body's natural steroid, which is an anti-inflammatory molecule. And what they do is they constrict the blood vessels, which, which decreases the amount of inflammatory molecules that are able to get to the skin. In eczema, what is happening is your skin is inflamed. There's a lot of redness. And what that is, is your immune system acting in that area of the skin. When you put the steroid cream on, it sh shuts down that immune system reaction um, which decreases the redness, the itch, the, the whatever is happening, but it's also not solving the root of the problem. We're going to talk about what are the roots, what some of those roots are in a moment here, but steroids are not the answer. They also can have long-term effects, which we often aren't taught about. So if you are like me, 
um, when you had eczema, when I had eczema, eczema, whatever you call it as a child, I had it. Uh, I was told to put steroid cream on it and I was basically never ever told to stop, which I ended up using them for years and then ended up in TSW, which is often the common story. So topical steroid withdrawal is the probably end of the road, one of the worst things that can lead from TSW or from topical steroid use long term. Some of the more dangerous things are suppression of the HPA uh, access, which is access which has to do with your adrenals, pituitary, pituitary and hypothalamus, how they're functioning together, Cushing syndrome. These are really serious things that don't happen often. Some of the more common things that you might actually see are loss of skin integrity. So your skin might be thinner or discolored or uh, it's not going to heal as quickly just might not look as vital. And this is because, yeah, your immune system is all is suppressed, but so is the healing, so is the growing, so is the radiance that comes from nourishing your skin. So what we call TSW or topical steroid withdrawal refers to a situation where the skin has lost its own ability to regulate inflammation. It is not producing its own cortisol, which we have found recently that it does, but when we use steroid creams, it loses the ability to, to do so. And so it can't calm any inflammation and things get worse and worse and worse. Our immune system becomes more discalibrated um, until eventually we end up to a massive rebound in reaction known as TSW, which can last anywhere from months to years and is a full body systemic thing going on. So like I was saying, physical addiction is part of it. This is when your skin as an entire organ gets addicted to the steroid cream as a drug. So when I say that uh, your skin is an entire organ, you may have heard this fact before, but your toes and your fingertips are literally uh, considered the same organ. They're interconnected. So if you use a steroid cream on your elbows, um, you might get eczema or topical steroid withdrawal, sorry, uh, on your feet. That's not common, but it can happen. And what I mean by this is just that your skin is connected. Uh, other things that are happening is vascular rebound. So your blood vessels are going to dilate, which means they're going to get bigger instead of constrict. So what the steroids did was constrict them, make them smaller. So uh, immune system activation couldn't get to your blood, through your blood, to your skin. Now, as things are rebounding, they're going to get bigger. So we're going to get an influx of immune system molecules of inflammation. And this is what we see when things are happening. Um, what this also looks like is a, a lot of blood. So this is partly why you see red skin. Um, what this also looks like is a lot of loss of heat because the blood vessels are wider. So you might notice things like chills, all of which we'll talk about in a moment here, but this is what's going on there. Also unchecked inflammation and overburdened detox pathways as we start to dump this stuff. Um, it's going to feed throughout your body. So what's the difference between eczema and TSW? Quickly, um, if you're watching this, you think you're in TSW, although you might be, if you were like me, praying that you're wrong, or maybe you're not sure, and maybe you're not going through it at all, and you just want to learn. Whatever it is, let's talk about the differences. Eczema is uh, typically not as intense, though it can be. Um, it's more itchy, it's more dry, it's more, it's more commonly found in predictable areas, such as the inner elbows, behind the knees, on your neck, um, on the neck, on the eyelids. Not, and it can be found in other places too, but it's usually symmetrical, it's usually found in these places. Um, usually more common in kids, although it can happen in adults as well. And it often stems from things like poor gut health, immune system reactions, imbalances, genetic conditions, high toxic load, food sensitivities, uh, environmental allergies, and things like that. Now, topical steroid withdrawal, like I just said, stems from a um, the skin's ability to regulate its own inflammation and chronic topical steroid use. And so what this looks like in a physiological, practical, everyday sort of sense is literally pun intended, eczema on steroids. It's way worse, it's more intense, it often comes out of nowhere. The eczema that was uh, in those common places like the inner elbows, it's starting to move, it's starting to go to other places that it never was before. Um, other systemic sy symptoms might start happening like body uh, chills, things like that, um, which actually, I will, I will start into this next section. So in the beginning is what you will notice in TSW, um, it's about six months is what I call the initial flare. So this is when that eczema has moved on from the point of just regular eczema and moved into something more intense. So often for me, if I took a picture here, this is how it started for me. You can see that my eczema has started going down my arms. It started in numular patches, which means they were round and then it started coalescing into the red sleeves. This is something that is quite common. So the red sleeves, um, is essentially that your arms are just completely and um, red, often ending at the wrist. Wrists are often a bad area. Um, you might notice oozing, you might notice swelling, you might notice um, night sweats, flaking, what's called elephant skin, which is sort of like an atrophied fat skin. Um, the itch is described as like a bone deep, unsatiating itch. So this is something you might experience. Um, 
this all sounds quite alarming <laughs> and it is. And so I will also preface this by saying, if you suspect this is happening to you, or if you find yourself in a situation where anything like this is happening to you, make sure you go get checked out by a doctor or professional in your area who can actually take a look at things, swab things if you need to, because there are some really serious conditions. Um, I mean, TSW is serious, but it is some life-threatening acute conditions that need to be checked out that can look like this. So all I'm saying is go get checked out um, if this is happening to you. After you do that, and you actually think that you are in topical steroid withdrawal, this is a time to start gathering your team and your guides that can help you through this process. So like I said, when I went through this, there wasn't many people that that could do it um, or that knew what was going on. And so I, I still think that there's maybe not too many, but there are more. There's more awareness. There's more um more stuff like this happening. So find yourself a team that can support you, that knows your body, that can help you through this process, whether that be someone like myself or another naturopathic doctor, a group, a community, um, a healer, whatever, someone that can help you. Start to really tune into your body because this process is going to be really interesting and it's going to allow you the opportunity to become more in touch with yourself than anybody often has the opportunity to do. Um, and when I say that, I mean, Things are going to, with TSW, it doesn't always, you don't always heal linearly. Like I was saying, you don't always start at the worst and get better. Things go up and down. Um, and so just being in touch with what's happening can help you trust that your body is always moving towards healing. And then what else to do? Cut out the basics. You know, some of the synthetic dyes, the chemicals, the laundry soap, the uh, makeup, the lotion, the things that you're using, just make sure that they're all clean. Uh, make sure your fabrics are good and clean, avoiding things like wool. You want things like satin, linen, things that are easy and breathable. Um, and we talk about that in the course. Things you don't want to do. You don't want to panic. Don't freak out. Um, you are going You are going to go through a transformation if you are going through TSW. Uh, it is a process. And um you know acceptance and gathering a team and preparing yourself for this it'll it'll be life-changing at the end of it you will be a different person um do not change your diet drastically do not start any new supplements do not do anything crazy your body is already starting to move through a process that's going to be intense you don't want to add anything more until you work with someone who knows that this is going to be the right thing for you um this was i was really not bad about this, but I would try a lot of supplements. I would take a lot because I had access to it and I would switch a lot because something wasn't working. And I see this happen a lot with my patients and it is not the best way to go about it. Um, do not do a detox. This is something I also did and would not recommend, do not recommend. There's a time and a place. The beginning of TSW is not that time or a place. So really it's really hard and counterintuitive almost. It's like when they tell you, um, I grew up in Vancouver in the forest and I would hike a lot. And they would say to us, if you encounter a bear and it charges at you, hold your ground and don't run away. Um, okay, great. If there's a bear charging you in the forest, I imagine, I luckily knock on wood, I've never experienced it, but I imagine it would be really dang hard to stand there while it angrily charges at you. That is what I am asking you to do after you get checked out by a doctor um, and make sure nothing serious has happened. And after you work with someone who has identified you're probably going through TSW is stand your ground, know that you are strong, gather your team and you and understand that you are always moving towards healing. Stare that bear down. So the initial flare I find usually can last anywhere from one to six months. If you get in with a proper, uh, someone who can help you cut that histamine response quickly, you can move through it quicker. And then what I find with TSW is the skin will start to move in cycles. Some of these cycles will be bright red, flushing heat, red sleeves. Uh, they might look like a sunburn. You'll get the red sleeves. This is a really hot red oozy phase. Avoid things like oils, Vaselines that are going to trap heat in. Another phase you might uh, experience is oozing and crusting. Again, always get this checked out because it can mimic an infection. You do not want to mess around with a skin infection, especially if it is near your face. Um, and so when this is happening, again, just be calm. Things like herbal compresses, Manuka honey can be helpful. Another phase you might notice is flaking and shedding. Again, do not pick at it. This is the hardest thing to do. This is probably the hardest advice I will ever give you in TSW. Do not, do not pick your flakes. Uh, your skin is not healed underneath. It is not meant to fall off. It is rare, raw and uh, underdeveloped. <clears throat> And elephant skin is another phase you might notice. This is when the skin is is like fat, literally looks like an elephant. This is a lingering phase. It tends to be the last. It's not as inflamed or red, but it's just kind of saggy in there. So these four-ish phases, so the bright red hot phase, the flary kind of phase, the oozy and the crust, the flaking and the shedding, the atrophied elephant skin, 
may cycle like this for months to years and they may be uh, like two week cycles they may be less they may be daily cycles i find that sometimes they start to get smaller as time goes by not always the case but for me and for some patients it is the case um just again this is where coming back to knowing your body and your cycles will really be key because in my roadmap approach i teach you how to understand that when your body is in each cycle some of the things that you can do to take care of it um, and start to when you start to recognize that you're switching into another cycle take really proactive approaches so you can uh, help your skin you may find that in each of these cycles or phases your skin requires wildly different things and will tolerate different things um, so it's always key to know yourself you might also notice more systemic systems. So I noticed, uh, you know, nerve pain, the zingers that come into your fingers, the enlarged lymph nodes, edema, swelling, eye dryness is a common one. Hair loss is a common one. Insomnia is a huge one and something I deal with a lot. We'll talk about that later. Appetite changes, fatigue, um, thermal regulation, which means hot, cold, like chills, uh, body dysregulation, sensitivity. All of these things can occur. And then also the downstream effects, like we were talking about um, relationship issues, irritability, insomnia, stress, nervous system discalibration, ir um, all of that kind of stuff, mental health stuff can come downstream from the effects of TSW as well. Okay, so we talked about that. Let's talk about our approach. What do we do? What do we do now? There is a four things, a four pronged approach that I use to help all my clients move through TSW, eczema, and understanding the process of what's happening through their skin. I'm going to go through them now. So the first one is identifying the root cause and figuring out what's actually going on beneath the surface. The second one is fixing that essentially. So we have now what's happening beneath the surface. We need to fix those systems that are out of balance. The third is calibrating our nervous system and mindset, something that is often overlooked when it comes to skin health, but is super, super important. And the fourth is actionable healing practicalities and things that we can do to directly nourish our skin. Okay, so let's go through those in a little bit more detail here. So the first one was investigating the root cause and figuring out what's actually going on beneath the surface. I think this is obviously so important. <clears throat> the first step is what's actually happening. Are you in TSW? Could it be an allergic reaction? Is it a fungal infection or a parasite? All of these things can contribute to eczema or TSW type conditions. So this is why I said, please go get checked out and make sure that you are ruling out anything important. For obvious reasons, figuring out what is happening will be the first key to an effective course of action. So after you get the uh, red flags, anything like that ruled out, it's important to find a practitioner that can help you identify the nuances of what's happening beneath the surface. Some of the time this looks like lab testing, but most of the time it is an in-depth high level intake where the practitioner can begin to put the pieces together that are contributing to the nuances or underlying factors going on beneath the surface. Some of the most common things that I see are a immune system dysfunction, what is called an atopic TH2 shift. Um, Gut health microbiome is something that I see often contributing to this. Conditions of chronic health can contribute to worsening skin health, chronic stress, overburdened detox pathways, nervous system dysregulations, or underlying allergies or infections. These can all contribute to uh, the root or all be involved in a root cause of what's contributing to eczema. So as you can see, figuring out what's actually happening will drastically change how we go ahead and treat. So if you have a piece of pen beside you, piece of paper and a pen beside you, I want you to write down how well on a scale of one to 10, do you think you understand the root causes behind your health and your healing? Okay, so the first one, identify the root cause. This is the first thing that I think should be key to rebalancing any skin. Uh, any skin condition. The second one is foundational health. So now that we have the root cause identified, let's actually fix it. Um, so what I'm talking about here is really working with those individualized systems that are out of balance. For example, like I was talking about before, one of the first things that I see in people with TSW or who are going through an eczema flare is a really hypersensitive immune histamine response. And so getting the histamine down will be one of the first things we want to do. However, getting the histamine down isn't actually the root cause. And so we're gonna be getting that down. We're also going to be figuring out that foundational system. This is why it's really important to do that step one. For example, if the underlying issue stems from an imbalanced microbiome due to early childhood, of maybe you were a C-section baby or you weren't breastfed um, and your microbiome never developed. We talk about all of this in the course, by the way, if you have no idea what I'm talking about. 
Um, but if this is the case, your immune system may not be developed and our treatment approach is going to be focused more on gut health and immune system balancing or your treatment approach. Um, if the issue is due more to a genetic defect that leads to an atopic TH2 shift, then our focus is going to be more about micronutrient supplementation and detox pathway optimization. So now you can start to see why it's so important to have a understanding of your body and what's actually going on. And you don't always need someone to tell you these things. Um, my passion is to help you understand how to do it yourself. It's always great to have someone put these pieces together. And that is something that I offer, but it's totally within your realm to get in touch with your body and know how to do these things yourself. Okay, the third foundational piece of um, focus you can do when you're trying to heal your skin is nervous system and mindset work. So the physical health is very important, but it is just as important, or the nervous system health is just as important. The nervous system is the interface between our body, our mind, our skin, our environment, and our skin and nervous system actually developed from the same um, embryological germ layer. So yes, if you go back long enough, we all develop from stem cells, but take a few steps forward and the skin and nervous system are very intimately connected. When our nervous system moves into trauma, our body is not in a state of wanting to heal, rest, or nourish. It's in a state of survival. And so if we are dysregulated, we're not going to be healing. We're going to be uh, stressed out. And how do we actually fix this? A lot of us nowadays are walking around in a trigger response. Our nervous systems are very dysregulated, whether we're going through a TSW or a skin condition or eczema, or we're just a human existing in this world. Um, a lot of us are existing this way. And so calibrating the nervous system is really important for skin health, but also just for ex like that, existing in this world. Um, I have a background in behavioral neuroscience. This is something that I am super passionate about, helping reprogram trauma patterns, helping do some deep work uh, that can help you prime your body ancestrally, epigenetically, neuroscientifically to actually heal properly. Community is also another huge piece of this here in mindset and just connection. And all of these things uh, may not sound like they are directly tied to your skin health, but they absolutely are. Again, this is a huge focus of my approach and I think something that makes the most difference when it comes to healing. Again, so I want you to write down on that paper right now on a scale of one to 10, how do you feel about your nervous system balance on the day-to-day? -day? 10 being completely uncalibrated, completely out of whack, and one being you are like a strong Zen master. How do you feel uh, that your nervous system is doing now? And finally, the fourth approach that I think is really important is just having practicalities on understanding how to take care of your skin and your body. So as you can see, this sort of ties it all together. After you figure out what's going on, you fix what's going on, you layer that all in with the mindset and the nervous system so you are primed to be able to, uh, to, to fix what's going on. And then we work on the practicalities of healing, what that actually looks like. In the Western world, uh, unfortunately, this looks a lot like suppression or really targeted, targeted immunological drugs, which again are at the end of the day suppressing the immune system. Um, what I like to do is do all of these things above. And sometimes we need to have specific approaches. So we talk about, uh, you know, red light therapy, light therapy, are those good options? Low dose naltrexone, hydrotherapy, biotherapeutic drainage, phototherapy. Um, what do I eat? No moisture withdrawal. Is that a good thing? Should I shower? What supplement should I take? These are all um, very practical options that can be utilized to help target, again, those nuances that may be needed to just get that skin to the next level. Okay, so the picture again, four things that I think that all skin protocols should include to help you rebalance from the inside out. Root cause, figure out what's going on, fix what's going on, layer it in with mindset and nervous system so your body is and then targeted approaches for the next level optimization. I would love to just share a couple of stories with you, with you now about people that I've worked with that were able to achieve the same results that I know are possible for you and for all of us. So first is Janine, who had been going through TSW for four and a half years by the time she saw me. Um, you could tell that she was just so fed up, dejected, burnt out. She had been through the ringer. She had seen all the doctors. She had tried all of the things. Um, and so for her and I together, our approach was just really getting down to the nitty gritty of what is actually happening here. So we focused on doing genetic, on understanding her unique genetic triggers. We did some testing, really uh, focused testing. We worked on allergy desensitization and also nervous system recalibration. And now it is two years later and she's completely unrecognizable. She's moved to Mexico. She's living her ideal life, fulfilling her job and her purpose. And her skin is clear and amazing. 
And again, it wasn't easy for her to get here. She had to step into some deep wounds in order to release her nervous system and allow her skin to actually heal. Um, and this involved any relationships that no longer served her, removing herself from her home with a, a triggering allergic environment. And she feels like a brand new person, but she's able to trust herself and her body. And TSW was a chapter for her that really allowed her to flourish as a person who she is now. Marco is another person I worked with. He came to me in the early stages of eczema heading into TSW. We were able to target Marco's immune system and control his histamine flare right off the bat. And that was really quick. Um, we learned from Marco that his triggers lay in his ancestry and that the way his immune system, or sorry, yeah, uh, sorry, his genetics and his immune system were actually balanced. So he had what's called a TH2 shift, meaning that his uh, like I was saying, his genetics pro propensate him towards more, I don't know why I keep saying that word propensate, <laughs> but uh, it pushed him more towards a place where his immune system would be triggered by allergies more. So we did a lot of work to shift his microbiome, which is in control of the immune system and help shift that into a less dominant state. And I'm happy to report that eight months later, Marco's skin is clear. He has moved on with his life. He's a big motorcyclist. So he's able to wear his helmet, sweats all day in it. It's totally fine. Uh, he still does have eczema once in a while, but he is able to get that under control because now he is so in touch with his body, his allergies and his, his sensitivities and triggers all of this work that we did together when we were working together that he is able to clear it pretty quickly. So imagine if this was your life, if you didn't have to constantly worry about your skin, your itch, your food, your fatigue, your allergies, how you're showing up. Imagine if you could just show up fully you and your beauty both inside and out could shine and people would not be judging you based on your skin. This is totally possible when you learn how to create a foundation for steroid free skin. Okay, so now that you have learned about the process and had a chance to evaluate where you might be sitting and where you might need some help and where you could, uh, you know, um, refine your process and your protocol for healing, I'm guessing that there might be some gaps or areas that you need to master in order to make this work for you. So the first step is to check out the options that's uh, options for working with me, which you can find below and you can book a call if you have any questions at all, or you're looking for a customized approach or you wanna know the best way to go about healing. I am here for you. I want you to feel comfortable in your skin and confident in your healing plan. Again, as a special offer for watching and learning, I have attached a free seven day low histamine recipe book and meal plan. You can find that below as well. So you can be really confident in what you are eating. <clears throat> With this process, I am asking you to make a de decision for yourself. It's time to step up and really uh, be confident in where you're going, your trajectory for healing and take an empowered approach to your body. What do you have to lose aside from struggling and being confused and feeling alone? That is absolutely not what I wish for you to go through. So don't keep doing things the way you've been doing them. Take a calculated approach. Be intentional with your healing. And if you are ready to move through and clear your skin, I have my invitation for you below. Hope to see you soon. Have any questions, you know where to find me. Have a great day.